Welcome to the homestead, y'all. A lot of homesteaders have chickens because they are easy to take care of and they are very valuable. Today, I do wanna talk about 20 common signs of illness in your chickens that you need to look out for. Let's talk about it. No matter how many chickens you have, you always need to keep an eye out for illness or injury or abnormalities within your flock. For those of you who are just starting out, start with a small flock because keeping an eye on every single chicken can be a time consuming challenge. So let's start off with number one, not eating well or not eating at all. There are many reasons why a chicken is not eating and all of them are not good because chickens should always be hungry or foraging around for something. And if they are not eating, this can indicate things like being egg bound, having an impacted crop or a sour crop, having some sort of an infection or just normal broodiness. That is one of the very few times when an illness indicator like not eating can be attributed to something normal like broodiness. Now the next three kind of go together, but you can get a chicken that just does one of the three. But most often a chicken will experience all of them. The first one is being lethargic, just not wanting to move, head kind of hanging low, and just not moving around and pecking and scratching like a normal chicken would. They're just kind of standing there by themselves. That's the second one. They are off by themselves in the corner. Usually chickens do like to be together and they do like to do activities together, like scratching around on the ground. They're always kind of in the same proximity. If you find one that's off in the distance, just standing, there's a problem with her. Now, if you saw our recent video on our chicken who did die, we thought she was egg bound. And that was one of the indicators that she put forth was that she was just standing by herself. And she was also doing this third one. And that is looking all hunched up. Her feathers were kind of ruffled up. Her back was kind of curled up and it looked like she was maybe cold, but that wasn't the case. So if you see a chicken that's kind of hunched up with her feathers kind of ruffled and it's nice and warm outside, then you know there's a problem. Now, if you see a chicken that's just acting lethargic, you will want to look for other symptoms because that one symptom in itself is obviously an indicator that she's not feeling well, but it's hard to tell what is bothering her from just that one thing. So somewhat related to the last three that I talked about is number five, which is a chicken that is straining to pass an egg. You will see them in the nesting box or wherever they are laying, really straining and really trying to push and maybe a little bit of sound coming out of them. Not essentially a grunt, but a little sound coming out of them indicating that they're really having a difficult time getting the egg out and they could be egg bound. They just got their soldier fly larva treat. It's one of their favorite things. So one of the next things you really want to look for on a chicken is in this area here and this is where her crop is. If you see any swelling here then that's a problem. Usually during the day though after they've been free ranging and foraging around for a long time it will grow but make sure that by the nighttime it shrinks back down because that food will move past the crop and through the system and into the gizzard. But if this front area where the crop is, right on the front of her chest, remains large for an extended period of time, you know you've got an issue. So with an impacted crop, food is going to get stuck in that crop and it's not gonna move past there and that'll cause her to not want to eat or to lose weight pretty rapidly. And you'll see by the really, really large bulge right on the front of her chest. But that can also indicate what's called sour crop. Sour crop is different. So with an impacted crop, it's gonna be hard and large. With a sour crop, it's gonna be soft and squishy, but also large and swollen. And what that means is she has a yeast infection in the crop and the crop walls are swollen up and they will constrict the crop itself on the inside and they won't let food pass through. So there are very similar situations, but the indicator itself is that large crop right in the front. So the next indicator you wanna check for on a chicken is if she's got a nice red comb and wattles. Now, different chickens will have different sizes and different shapes of their combs and wattles, but you always want them to be a nice bright red. Some have different shades of red, so don't mix that up with having an issue with the chicken. But if they're pale or white, 
then that's a serious problem and it can indicate a lot of different things. Pale crops are indicators of a lot of different things. And there are some other issues with the crop in turning different colors like blue or purple and things like that that you need to look out for. We're gonna concentrate on the pale or white crop because that is the most common. It can indicate in some cases that they have just laid an egg. They just strained an egg out, they used a lot of energy to do it, and it does make the crop a little bit pale. It could be extreme stress from maybe getting pecked on, but it could be that she is internally bleeding or anemic. Now that pale crop can also indicate if they have parasites on board somewhere in their body, whether that's a mite or some sort of internal parasitic infection, it'll really have to be thought through and uh, investigated what it is with the chicken. Now, if the chicken does have parasites, you are going to notice it in a different way as well. And that is by checking their stool. So you always wanna be looking at the droppings of your flock. You will be able to see parasites like roundworm and tapeworm and threadworms in the droppings of uh, your chickens. And it will also appear to have a foamy consistency. So those are indicators that you've got a problem as well. We use a dewormer about every six months for our flock and it seems to work pretty well. I've never noticed the parasites with our chickens. And honestly, if they are foraging properly and free ranging and getting the nutrients they need from the environment, then that's going to give them the proper probiotics for their gut to be able to overcome any parasites like that. Parasites like those worms are common in chickens that are in a cooped up small environment and they are not let out very often at all. So if you're not able to have your chickens out in an environment like this, even though it's small, then you want to add some probiotics to your chicken's diet. Now there's another thing that you really have to look out and pay attention to when observing your chicken's stool, and that is blood. If they have blood in the stool, that probably means they have coccidiosis. Something you need to get treated right away in a chicken or it will kill them. Now the other symptoms of that are not only the blood in the stool, but they will be lethargic. Their combs will be a pale color. They will have that ruffled appearance to them like they're cold when it isn't cold outside. Keep an eye on that. The next one is if you encounter one of your chickens who's standing in an odd position with their wings kind of away from their body, that's gonna indicate that they are overheating. And there's one thing you need to do for that chicken is get it some water and get it under some shade. If you have a coop with a run that is in full sun all the time, you are going to need to get some sort of shade out there for them, some sort of canopy so that they do not overheat and get dehydrated. The appearance of your chicken's feathers can be an indicator if something is wrong with them as well. These two are perfectly healthy, but the larger one does bully the other one just a little bit. And you can see that bald spot uh, back by her tail. That's the only place she gets pecked. Missing or broken feathers can indicate bullying like this, or it could indicate that the chicken is preening themselves if they have a bald spot on them. But it could also indicate that they do have mites. Hey, I did want to mention if you are interested in these t-shirts we designed for our channel, they are linked below the video. The next group of indicators for illness for your chickens all do go together somewhat, but there are variations between all of them. Now this next indicator can be an indicator of illness, but it's often not. So that is an open sore on your chicken. Chickens are mean and they do peck each other a lot and there is a pecking order. And if you see an open sore on a chicken, it could be because, well, it's most likely that they are getting pecked. But in rare occasions, a different type of open sore could indicate fowl pox. Usually with fowl pox, you will see scabs or lesions on the combs of your chickens. And fowl pox is an infectious virus and it does take about three to five weeks to run its course. Usually healthy chickens can get through fowl pox with no issues. Now scabs on their feet, legs, or near their vent does indicate mites. So mites will attack those areas more and that's where those scabs and small lesions will appear. So you'll have to look out for that all the time. It's easy to uh, see mites actually if you just 
push back the feathers of your chickens. And you will notice they are down at the base of the feather near the skin. Mites will start off gray, but they are usually called red mites because they start sucking the blood out of your chicken in those certain areas. The best way is preventative treatment for mites, and that is keeping a dust bath available for them. Our chickens have dirt floors, so they usually do take a dust bath uh, on the dirt floor. We do provide some diatomaceous earth for them, but we also do spread di uh, DE, or diatomaceous earth, throughout the coop. And it's important to keep your coop clean, because those mites will invade the coop. Now the next two go hand in hand. Sometimes one appears and sometimes the other appears. The first one is swelling around the eyes. And the second is swelling of the wattles and comb. And those usually both indicate foul cholera. That is usually just in older chickens, but it's always a good idea to keep an eye on them no matter what their age is. The next one is pretty serious and that is watering, mucousy, bubbling eyes or nose. And that's gonna be an indicator of what's called MG or MS. MG stands for Mycoplasm Galicepticum. And it is actually a really common upper respiratory infection in chickens. Another indicator of that can be rasping or wheezing when they are trying to breathe. And these are gonna sound the same as if you or I had an upper respiratory infection. That rasping or wheezing could also indicate Newcastle disease or an infectious bronchitis. So you always want to be listening with your chickens. And another one that usually comes along with the other ones but can be isolated by itself is sneezing or coughing from a chicken. It may sound strange, but they do do that. And the very last of those 20 indicators that your chicken has an illness or something is wrong with it is that it's limping. Usually if your chicken is limping, it indicates that they have what's called bumblefoot. What bumblefoot is, is a staph infection on the bottom of their foot, and it can lead to death if it's not treated. Bumblefoot can be caused by a few different things. One of those is a splinter in the bottom of the foot of the chicken. And they will get splinters from having really rough bedding inside of their coop or their run. It is sometimes caused by chickens jumping down from a really tall roost. So if your roosting bars are high, which chickens do like, you need to provide some sort of ladder for them to get up there. I hope this list of indicators is helpful for you in identifying illness in your chickens so that you can keep them as healthy as possible. Just always keep your eyes on them the best that you can. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below and like the video, it really helps out. Now go click on this video right here, which is our video on a nesting box that saved our eggs from getting eaten and pecked on. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.